Hey friend, welcome. I, there's a huge snowstorm that's supposed to be hitting the Midwest like tomorrow. And I thought it would be really fun to make a sensory bin for my little kids. It's just something fun and interesting to hold their attention while we're stuck in the house. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Jen. I'm married to Alex and we have four kids. They are 3, 6, 11, and 14. And I like to chat about contentment and what that means in a world that is just full of comparison. And you might think, what <laughs> does that have to do with a sensory bin? And we'll definitely get to that. But first I wanted to chat a little bit about the benefits of a sensory bin. Before I had kids, I was a preschool teacher for five years, a few years. And I actually have training on early childhood development and sensory bins are just so good for that. I'd say about 18 months to, mm, well, I mean, my 11 year old was playing with mine today, with ours today. So really that preschool age, it's super good for them in a lot of ways. Um, Salus University, the Occupational Therapy Institute said, sensory bins provide children with the opportunity to explore and learn through hands-on tactile play that engages their senses. I just thought that was a really good definition of what a sensory bin does. So it helps with, it gives them sensory exploration. When you, you know, put things in a bin or on a table and allow them to just do whatever they want with it, and they can use their hands and their eyes and their ears and their noses and just explore with their senses. It's just so good for them. It helps to improve fine motor skills. Often we put little tiny things in the sensory bin and it just helps them to use that pinch pincer motion, especially in the younger ones. I like to put like wooden tweezers in there to help with that motion as well and there's just you know so many when they're anytime they're using their hands they're building those muscles which is what helps them to develop that fine motor skills um it's cognitive development <laughs> play in little kids is brain development that's how they learn they learn through play and what better way than to you know throw a bunch of stuff in a bin and let them have it so it, there's also language development uh, we'll talk a little bit later but we put you know colors or letters or numbers in and it helps them to learn those colors and letters and um, shapes also. So lots of different things that you can do to help with language development in your sensory bin. It's really, um, most of the time, a calm, quiet activity, something that's great for a rainy day or a snowy day, as will probably be the case for us tomorrow. Um, it helps cooperative play, increases um, socialization with their peers, or in my case, their siblings. You know, uh, I actually as I set out the sensory bin earlier for them, uh, we had to had to work out some disagreements on who was gonna play with what, and one kid just wanted to go at it, and one kid wanted to organize all the things, and you know they have to learn to play play and um, cooperate with each other and learn how to disagree well, and that's just a really great way to do that. I think I hit all my benefits. You you asked me earlier. I know I know you did. You asked me what is sensory bins? What do sensory bins have to do with being content? And it, it's easy to compare ourselves. It's easy to okay. For me, when I'm looking for a sensory bin idea, I go on Pinterest. And my goodness, these sensory bins are just some of them are just plain gorgeous. Well, I a year ago. I wanted to do a totally Waldorf inspired uh, uh, sensory bin for my kids. And I put all the stuff in my Amazon cart with like, you know, um, all wooden, every, you know, bins and containers and everything was nature. And uh, it was beautiful, but it was like $100. <laughs> and I was like, um, no. I'm not gonna do that. And I did try to see if some other friends wanted to go in with me and we could 
you know, I had to buy some of these things in bulk and I didn't need, you know, eight of them, just one or two. But if I had had a few friends that I could split those up in between, then it would have been a little more uh, doable. But I didn't have any takers and that's fine. Uh, so I, you know, just went to the thrift store <laughs> and I went to the Dollar Tree and I got the things that kind of made sense for the theme that I picked or the season that we were in and you saw my thumbnail like it's not Pinterest worthy some of it doesn't make sense uh, I bought some trees at Christmas time to put in a Christmas sensory bin and I never did the Christmas sensory bin and I didn't want them to go to waste so guess what they're in today's sensory bin and it doesn't really make sense but it's still fun and my kids don't care if it's perfectly themed or not. They just care that I gave them something fun to do and it's captured their interest, you know, for about like 10 or 15 minutes anyway, like most preschoolers. So, um, you know, you don't, yours doesn't have to look like mine. It doesn't have, certainly doesn't have to look like the ones on Pinterest. Just use what you have on hand, go around your house and, a lot of this stuff comes from my kitchen, from my pantry. The other thing with contentment and sensory bins is just give yourself grace. When I started this school year in September, I made a list of the theme that, of the sensory bin that I was going to use from September to May. I made one in September and it was gorgeous. And in October, I didn't make one. Or November or December. Or January. Actually, today's the 31st, so it counts for January, right? Um, no, we're going to count it as February. <laughs> so, I mean, was that four months? I went without even making a sensory bin. And you know what? That's okay. My kids are still learning. They're still playing. They're still having fun. I just have to give myself grace and say, you know what? Not today. I just can't do it today. Or, you know, four months. <laughs> just depends on your season, right? All right, so let's talk a little bit about how to put one together. They're really simple. I do enjoy going onto Pinterest and looking at different ideas. There's so many really cute themes. So I gathered a couple themes for um, winter <laughs> that you could use. Winter's thankfully coming to an end, right? Uh. Not here in the Midwest, it's not. Um, you could, of course, just go plain Valentine's Day. All Valentine's Day, all the time. Arctic animals was another fun winter theme. Uh, hot cocoa, snow, snow globe or snowball theme. The one that I kind of went off of was letters in the snow. We did numbers in the snow. And you just can pick a theme or not. It could just be winter or it could just be random things they have around the house. That's a great sensory bin theme. But I'll, I'll share with you here how we're going to build one. So you want to start with a bin. It can be like one of those lidded bins that you get it like a shoebox plastic bin. That'd be fine. You could use like a 9 by 13 Pyrex dish. And then, I mean... I say Pyrex dish because that's my generic term that I use for, you know, like a glass baking dish. You could use um, like a cardboard box, a lid from a card box, cord box. I'll get it. A lid from a cardboard box <laughs> would be genius. That would be, you know, something like a, like a two inch lip. I, oh, you know what else I love is, I don't know if you have ever gotten like a Melissa and Doug toy sets, but they come in like those um, compartmentalized wooden box reuse one of those I the one we use is leftover there was like a Noah's Ark thing that I found at a thrift store and I could never fit the Noah's Ark thing back in the box so I reused the bin I mean it's like a wooden box I reused that bin and stuck the Noah's Ark stuff in a different bin that that fits better so you start with the bin and then you're going to put a filler in. So some filler ideas would be, you could do water beads, those would be really fun in the summer. You could do rice, beans, pasta, beads, cereal, uh, bird seed. That'd be kind of fun in the spring, right? Bird seed, also messy. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be honest with you and just hear it, it's truth. 
Sensory bins are messy. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> All right, so then you want some tools. Tools are where I was going overboard last year and I was like, oh, all the things have to be wooden and uh, they don't, they don't. I uh, use like the plastic scoops out of like our protein powder. I found, I did find a wooden scoop at the thrift store for like 50 cents. That's a really great place to find like wooden or reusable tools is the utensil section at the thrift store there's all sorts of you you can find like wooden forks and all sorts of crazy stuff um i did find like wooden tweezers also at the thrift store you can buy those online as well uh let's see what else could you use oh rolling pins those are great especially when you use play-doh and i forgot to say filler ideas play-doh play-doh's a great one and today we're going to make snow dough i actually made it we're gonna go back in time a little bit later um we made snow dough for our sensory bin today so and then you just want some objects to put in there so you could go based off of the theme or just grab whatever stuff you have from around the house so i'll show you a little bit later what we put in our sensory bin today but it's just kind of random stuff i either already had on hand stuff i'd found at the thrift store stuff i found at the dollar tree i spent five dollars I think total on the things that I needed to buy no big deal <laughs> that's doable and you know what if I hadn't bought those things I still could have put together a pretty decent sensory bin without spending any money and then this is one thing I really like to do is to add a scent and I like to add a scent in a couple different ways you could use like essential oils especially if you're using like a dough um, you can scent that with um, in your dough like a play-doh but i what i really like to use are whole spices so we've used cinnamon sticks you could use like nutmeg allspice um whole cloves i struggled finding some in my grocery store today they want to grind all the spices <laughs> before they sell them to us but i believe you know i'm sure you can find them probably at your grocery store if not, you can just put a ground spice also into your dough. But I like to use the whole spice. That way they can use those as some of the manipulatives as well. They can count them out. They can stack them. They can create things with them um, around Christmas time. Actually, I think it was in the fall. They were sticking the cinnamon sticks into like clumps of Play-Doh to, you know, create things out of. So... It doesn't have to be some crazy ginormous thing. It just, you know, something. Something for your kiddo to play with. All right, so let's head back in time. Rewind. And I will show you how I put together our Valentine winter numbers in the snow randomly themed sensory bin for my kids. All right, so I am going to make the snow dough for the sensory bin. This is just something I got off Pinterest. It's flour, cornstarch, and oil. And I just ran to the store and got those things today. So the recipe called for four cups of oil, of flour, four cups of cornstarch, and one cup of oil. I am gonna do half of the recipe because I feel like that's a lot. <laughs> and that's not going to end well. So the easiest way for me to do half of the recipe is instead of a one cup measuring cup, I just used a half cup measuring cup. But you can just half it. Because I'm not you know, making cookies or something. I'm not super worried about it being exact. When I make cookies, I measure out my flour, like I spoon it in and all that stuff, but I am not at all worried about that today. So yeah, that's gonna make a ton for my kiddos. So I'm just going to 
grab a fork and stir this all together. I'm actually gonna add two more things into this recipe. One is about a half a bottle of glitter. And I just bought silver glitter at the Dollar Tree. But I just thought, you know, glitter in the snow seemed kind of fun. And then the other thing I'm going to add is ground cloves. Usually, I like to add a whole spice to my sensory bin. So like the one that I did in the fall, I added whole cinnamon sticks. And I was looking for whole cloves, but I was really struggling to find some whole cloves. <laughs> allspice, nutmeg, anything that would be a whole spice that would just add that smell part of the sensory to the sensory bin. Anyway, I was struggling today at the grocery store, so I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna add some, some spice to my mix instead of just adding the whole spice to the actual sensory bin. And, It'll work out just fine. That's one of those things where, you know, I just have to make do with what I have and not be stressed out about it. So I don't want to add too much of the clove because I don't want my snow to be brown. <laughs> but I do want it to smell like clove, so I keep, it doesn't want to come out. There we go. I think I'm gonna add just a smidge more oil to this too because it's not really like it should kind of crumble like this but it should also kind of hold its shape I guess it is holding its shape I'm still going to add a smidge more oil just like you know <laughs> like that I don't know how much that was maybe a tablespoon So then I'm just going to add this to my bin, my sensory bin, and then I will start Yeah, there we go. Got, yeah, it does have a little bit of a brown tint to it, but that's okay. We'll be all right. And then I'm just going to start adding things to my bin. So I like to use little silicone muffin liners. They, I just had them on hand. You could use really any little container to hold your little bits and pieces together. Those are the, the wooden chop uh, tweezers I was talking about earlier. There I have little uh, scoops to use with the dough. I like to add in cookie cutters, especially when we're using any kind of dough like Play-Doh. There you can see the little heart bead things that I got and then these are little felt hearts. These are just things I've picked up at the Dollar Tree. They always have all sorts of seasonal items so it's easy to find things that fit with the theme of the sensory bin. I have, those are the little wooden numbers that the numbers in the snow theme was kind of based off of. Little wood slices, those were left over from Christmas ornaments. Here I'm adding those Christmas trees that I talked about. They are different colors, which was kind of fun. We talked earlier about adding colors in where we can teach, especially little ones, colors, and that really helps with language development and cognitive development, especially early on. And here I found little felt little woodland creature type things. I just thought they would be a fun little addition. And now it's ready to play.
Well, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed the sensory bin ideas that I shared with you. And I would really love to know if you use sensory bins and what your favorite theme for a sensory bin is. Maybe, maybe I'll try to duplicate it. <laughs> or, you know. I'll just pull random things from my house. Anyway, if you've enjoyed today's video, please give me a like, a thumbs up, and subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it as I'm trying to build my YouTube channel here. And you can always check out another video as well. I make videos on motherhood, marriage, and homemaking. There's another video right here. And please remember, as you are creating things and doing things for your kiddo, it doesn't have to be perfect. And even if it is perfect, <laughs> or even if it's not, you're doing great and you are okay just the way you are. I'll see you soon.